Hey, this is Joe with Personas. Let's talk about colors in Studio One. Now, before you leave, I, I'm, I'm a no-nonsense guy when it comes to music production. I, I don't like to get bogged down in the weeds of things that don't have some contribution to the final piece of music that I'm working on, right? So in one sense, the color of Studio One makes zero difference to the sound of whatever is going in and coming out. However, we spend lots and lots of time staring at Studio One, right? If we're making a lot of music. So it makes sense. Why not make the place look kind of nice? So you may have you may have seen earlier this year, I kind of decided that I'm gonna. this is going to be the year of brightness inside of Studio One. So the first thing I did, and I've stuck with this for a few months, and I'm digging it, so I'm going to keep it, is if you come to, adv I always forget where it is, it's under General and Appearance, there's this contrast slider here. Um, no, it's the, no, it's the Luminance, sorry. <laughs> this Luminance slider. Um, this is kind of how... This is about how Studio One has looked for me for, I don't know, a decade. Um, darker, and I, I like dark background apps just in general, but for a season, I want to go brighter. Just there's a, there's a cleanliness to it that feels nice. So I'm cranking the contrast and the luminance all the way up. And so you see a little hint of these colors here from the different folders, um, but that, that feels pretty good to me. So I'm going to leave that, but then today what I want to look at is the actual colors of my buses themselves. I've used the same color scheme for a really long time, and I don't want to change it up dramatically, but I do want to change it up because as of version 6.1, uh, we've added the ability to really customize your color. So if you ever clicked on the, if you go to a track and you click down here, <laughs> that's way too zoomed in. If you click here on a track, it pops up a color palette. Um, and we've always had a color palette, and there were even fewer options than you see here, I believe. But there's a new thing here you may have noticed. You click on this, and you've got this funky-looking, really cool color wheel. I don't know if that's the official name, but it's a color wheel. So I can go through, and I can like hone in on exactly the right hue of whatever particular color that I want. Um, and this is really cool. So you can have literally have a layout of colors that is unique to you. Now, there's a couple of things. This could be a thing that you get bogged down in, right? Where you're spending all your time customizing your colors um, on each individual track. Here's what I suggest. I've got actually, this is my mix template right now. And I've got it set up where I've got these uh, seven folders here. They're folders in the arranger, and I've also got them connected to buses in the mixer view. There are other videos that show you how to do that. Um, and what happens is anything I drag into these folders inherits the color of that folder. So I really only have to make seven color decisions, and, I, and I'm done because everything in my session will be one of these seven colors. So that's what I'm gonna to do today to set up my template for the next mix session so I've got some new fresh colors available to me. So let's start with the drums. To me, drums, are, drums need to be some shade of blue. I'm gonna keep that trend, but I wanna to try to expand that a little bit and find exactly what I want. So this has kind of two things. You can drag to get the primary color you're looking for, which is for me somewhere in the blue. And then this other dot lets us drag and go lighter, darker, sharper, all those different words. So I'm gonna go, we're gonna go lean towards the brightness here. I really like that kind of a turquoisey blue. That makes me happy, cool. Bass, bass is a dark sound, so I tend to have a dark color with it, but let's be adventurous. Let's go a little brighter on the red, maybe more like a reddish orange. I still like it to be in the red camp. I don't think I can, I don't think I can do pink. Uh, but that, mm, I like that. That's, that's pretty close to what it was before, but we're going to roll with it because that made me happy. All right, electrics and acoustics. I tend to have those separate because they're such different sounding things. But since they're guitars, I make them green, green for guitar. But let's explore some different shades of green that we can have here. So maybe we go, if we're going brighter, maybe more of a lime color for the electrics. That's kind of fun. Yeah, and my, my lead vocals are typically bright yellow, so a bright lime for guitars, like lead guitars, that makes sense. And then acoustics. See, two greens next to each other can be a little wonky. So what if we go something more forest greeny like that? 
Okay, that's completely no, look, that's no color. This is how Studio One looked years ago. It was just all gray, like a submarine. I'm so glad it looks a little bit better now. What if we went, hmm. What if we bring this over to this interesting kind of, almost coral kind of a color? That's kind of what the electrics were before. Now the electrics looks too yellow. Let's, uh, let's make it a little more green. Yeah, look, base and electric are Christmas colors now. That See, now that looks kind of gross. I don't like that either. Let's go more, yeah, deeper on the green. All right, that feels pretty good. Keyboards, let's go something fun with keyboards. I usually go off some variation of yellow, but the yellows in Studio One have never been, or sorry, the oranges in Studio One have never been all that great. I want something nice and bright orange. So what if we get... I want it to look like a dream sickle. <laughs> that, that's actually kind of fun. Um, vocal, I want bright yellow. That's probably not going to change unless we find an even cooler, brighter yellow. Actually, that is a little bit brighter. Um, I'll stick with that. Background vocals, purple. I don't love purple as a color, so let's find a variation of this purple that we can live with. Something probably darker, deeper, or maybe more violet. Maybe violet's the way to go. Ooh, I like that a lot. Again, it's not super different from what I had before because it's going to be hard for me to break away. I don't love the orange here. No, I can't. See, I just can't find the right orange that I want. Something like that, but a little bit brighter would be good. So what if we took that and just said, brighten up. Maybe go a little more towards the red. Yeah, that feels better. Kind of a burnt orange. That feels pretty good. All right, I can live with that. It's darker, but I'm cool with that. And then my effects, I've always had them just be white, just so I can kind of spot my effects pretty easily. They don't go to a bus. So you can make the argument for let's put them in a bus. But um, for this, let's just go really, 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 really light on like almost white, but with maybe just a little bit of hint of green in there or something. That's kind of a fun color. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so now now that I have these colors picked out, and I think I'll leave my main mix like it is, uh, what do we do now to make sure we have this available to us forever and ever? Uh, it's really simple. You just go to File, Save As Template, and then I click the Replace Existing Template button. This pulls up my Studio One folder that I can then choose the mix template here and just replace the one that was there. And just like that, now this is my new mix template. So every time I start a new mix, I've got this kind of freshened up color palette here waiting for me, which I really dig. And when I drag in files, let's see if we can find one real quick. Let's just find a random audio file. This is great. I can drag it into, okay, fine. There's not something there. Let's go find a, look in my Joe Gilder music. There should be something in here. Here we go. Let's drag that in. And we can see as we drag it into the different folders, it changes, whoops, it changes color to go along with the color of that folder and that group. And I like those a lot. Those look great. So yeah, it's a good idea to check these with actual audio files in them. I really like that right there um, before you go nuts and start um, saving this. So then you can kind of keep tweaking it, keep resaving it until you find something that makes you super duper happy. All right, that's it for me. Happy coloring. Do, you know, give yourself 15 minutes to do this and then go back to making music. But it is fun to have kind of something new to look at when you sit down to mix. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.